Greetings today from Kazangula, Botswana. It is another warm day today and I have the windows open. So if the curtains are moving a little bit, please bear with me. I'd like to get some air. I have something to share with you today about debt, about taking debt. A little bit ago, I did a video short on taking debt, but I wanted to share uh, an experience that I had, the way the Lord has dealt with me, and I hope that it can be a blessing to your life. It would be easy enough to, to tell people, to tell Christians especially, don't take debt. If you're in debt, get out of debt, do everything you can to seek the Lord for his wisdom, he will help you. Don't just say, well, I'm going to go and work myself out of debt, and then I'll get back to the Lord's business. No, you are the Lord's business if you're a Christian, and he has to lead you out of debt, even if you mistakenly got yourself into it. Uh, I don't want anyone to feel condemned. I want you to listen and let the Lord do the leading in your life. The Lord led me to the study of a 19th century saint, saint named George Mueller. Uh, some of you will recognize this name. You will certainly recognize, if I'm talking to you about his orphan work, he was known for taking care of orphans by faith. He was also a pastor. He did work in missions. There were many things that he did, but he truly trusted in the Lord by faith. He did not broadcast his need. Uh, that is, he didn't go around fundraising for anything. He actually built an immense orphanage, he and, and his helpers. And they never asked anyone directly for money. What they did was they employed Matthew 6, 6, where Jesus said, go into your closet, uh, pray to your father in secret, and your father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. George Mueller believed that taking debt was a sin. Now, I don't go that far, but it is very, very, very bad. And it's very rampant today. Uh, his, his key verse that he focused on that really stood out to him was Romans 13, 8. I'm not going to open my Bible directly in front of the video. I will have all of these scriptures in the description. But Romans 13, 8, the first half of the verse, just says, Owe no man anything. And the whole verse is, Owe no man anything but to love one another. Uh, and so he took that very seriously. We need to live honestly toward those that are without when we are in debt, we seriously bind the Lord's work. And not only that, many times we are just indebted to ungodly sources. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, some of you may have relatives or friends. You're in a very casual and trustworthy relationship. Hey, could you loan me $20 until payday? Uh, something like that. Maybe even a little more than that. But you're not in, a, in, a, in an interest-paying situation. And it's a very trustworthy, casual situation. What we're talking about in debt is when someone is taking a mortgage on a home. You know, they, they buy a $200,000 home and they have maybe $20,000, $10,000, $20,000 to put down on it. And then they have to mortgage it. Some would say, oh, well, you could always sell the home and get the money back. But you are in debt. You don't own the home. You know, you own the debt and you're going to be in bondage for that. And so I can't tell you where you're going to be with the Lord on these things. If he leads you to a place where you have to take a loan for a home or something like that. Uh, but bear in mind, you, we are strangers here on the earth. Nothing we have is going to go with us. And so we shouldn't be in bondage to anyone. And owning a home is a huge responsibility. It's a huge expense. Even if someone says, the common logic is, well, you'll own the home when you're when you're done with it, but you don't own it. And when you die, you won't own it. You're a Christian and everything's supposed to be for the Lord. All I wanted to review a couple scriptures here. And again, George Mueller did everything. He would go to the Lord and the Lord would prompt the hearts of people to give to him. The, the autobiography of George Mueller is called a mil is called a million and a half in answer to prayer. That sounds pretty, pretty prosperous, but the million and a half was over more than 60 years of his life. And of course, I think there was a record that he had received 93,000 pounds. He was, this was Britain, 93,000 pounds in donation to him. Okay, that's not for the, the orphan work and other things, but for him personally. And he gave back 81,000 pounds. 
of that 93,000, he was a steward and he gave back 87%, you know, toward different ministries. God took care of him and that's what he wants for us. You need to understand this also. There is a central bank system that is in the world. It is named something different in each and every nation. In the United States, it's the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve are privately owned banks that control the wealth of the nation. They are not federal by any means. It's just a name, just like FedEx is just a name. It's not federal. There are like 12 privately owned banks that share the wealth of the United States and all the nations, the last I knew, all the nations of the world except two. And that was Iran and North Korea. So they control them and they control them through debt. They tell them what to do. They control the money supply. This is Satan's plan and it's very effective. So please don't get caught into it. We know from Proverbs 22, 7, the Lord is telling us that the borrower is servant to the lender. And you know this is true. The borrower serves the lender. You're in debt to them as long as you owe them money. And uh, it's not a good position to be in. If you get into the New Testament, you're seeing very plainly that we are bought with a price. Be not the servants of men. Also, be not unequally yoked together with unbelief. Most of the time, that's what's happening with these debts. We are borrowing from unbelief. You know, we've also been told in Scripture a number of times that we will lend, but we will not borrow. Some of that's Old Testament, some of that's new. Jesus is encouraging his disciples uh, to give and to lend to those that can't repay and stuff like that. But he's not telling them to borrow. He says, I, he will take care of you. Matthew 6, 33 is one of those examples. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things you need will be added to you. The love of money is the root of all evil. We need to provide things honest in the sight of men. And that can be different ways if we're taking debt. If we have to have certain cars, we have to have a certain house, we have to have certain things and we're taking debt to get them. It's not really what we own. People see and say, wow, he's doing pretty good. Uh, I remember one family that I went to to do a service work for and they were in kind of a, a modest home. But outside, they had two BMW SUVs. And I thought, whoa, I guess I know where their money is, is going to. But uh, they are good, obviously, in all kinds of weather. God has promised to take care of our need, but he doesn't want us to be in debt. We need to believe in him by faith. It is such a shame for a Christian to say, God is leading me. He has called me to this service. He has called me to this, called me to that. And you're out borrowing money. How many times do you see this, that even churches are going around to ungodly, unsaved businesses asking them to give money? This is bad. You know, God can take care of us. The whole thing is, we want it now. You know, we know ways to get it now. But there's a way God has told us to do it. And that's very important. We cannot compromise our faith. And I can relate to this very well. I'm just going to share what the Lord has done. Uh, for my wife and I. So it was 14 years ago, over 14 years ago, when the Lord first led me to the study of George Mueller. And I encourage anyone to, to study George Mueller. You don't necessarily have to buy the book. There are things you can look at online about him, things that have been shared uh, for free. Um, and I can, my wife would attest that after the first time I read about him, I, I told her, I said, wow, I'm, I'm glad we don't have to live like that. <laughs> the only problem was he was obeying the Lord. He was following the word of God, which he knew very, very well. Uh, no one knows for sure how many times he read the Bible through. Uh, probably a good estimate is around 150 times. And I mean, he knew it. He depended on it. He would, he would read the Bible on his knees as it was God. He was receiving God's word into his heart. Just an incredible uh, saint of the Lord in this way. Anyway, about five months after that, I felt his conviction saying, I want you to read him, read about him again. 
and I didn't realize how far gone I was. I mean, we had debt. In America, it's like everybody has debt. I mean, they do. And at least compared to many people, uh, we were not severely overloaded. I think it was somewhere around $60,000 in all uh, that we owed. It, it's, it's hard to remember. 55, 60, maybe a little over. I, I'm not sure. Forgive me for that. And so I was really convicted at that time then that the Lord wants us, you know, not, not to take debt. But the problem is I was already in debt. We were already in debt. And uh, in the course of things over time, the Lord actually kicked me out of work for a period of three years. I'm not saying that I was that I was physically incapacitated. I mean, he did chasten me and tell me to leave my work. And it turned out it was for a period of about three years. And he had good reason for this. But uh, and then and then I went back. I mean, then there was a time of going back. This is just a, a period of growth. We have to do things God's way. Because there, another problem could be is when we see this with the debt. Oh, God, I'm sorry for debt. Don't worry, I'll get out of debt. Then we go trying to do this ourselves. We're trying to deliver ourselves. And we separate ourselves from God because we're working in the flesh to take care of this. We have to trust in the Lord. We can't, we can't separate our relationship from Him to repay what we owe. He will help us do that. If he gave his son for the debt of our sin, when we were guilty sinners, he's going to help us out of our debt. He doesn't want you to say, oh, I'm going to go work it out, and then I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll serve you when everything's okay. You know, that's that's baloney. He's our Lord now. He's our Lord in difficulty. And uh, he wants to be. That's how we develop a good relationship with him. He uses those uh, stumblings we have in the flesh, and uh, he uses them for his glory. Now, what happened over the next couple of years after he had told me this, actually over two years, I didn't realize this. Of course, we were in debt. I didn't know how to get out. And without even realizing it, I was taking debt to pay debt. In other words, I'd use one credit card to pay another credit card. This could work okay for a while. I mean, you wouldn't accrue interest if you played it right. But sooner or later, something would come up and, you know, you'd need money for something else. And, you know, it would start building up. And I mean, I wasn't trying to take any fresh debts. I wasn't going out and making any wild purchases or anything like that. The thing is, I didn't really realize what I was doing. I mean, the Lord had shown me not to take debt. And so that is for what he tells you. Don't take debt. Not so easy when you've been in the habit of doing that for how many years? I don't know. Too many. One is too many. Certainly, I had way more than that. And so when the Lord showed this to me, it really grieved me. It really tore me up inside. You've been taking debt to pay your debts. And I told you not to take more debt. And I'm just like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, Lord, what do I do? And, uh, you know, he forgave me. He's gracious. He said he would forgive. But you know something? There has to come a testing time. Do you mean what you say? Will you listen to me? Have you heard me this time, son? And about two months later, our water heater gave out in our home. Most of you know what a water heater is. I'm in Africa. They use what they call geysers here if they have them. Uh, I think geysers are still in the minority. It might be a quarter of the homes have them. I couldn't guess. It's probably more in the big city. I don't, I don't know for sure. But everyone has a water heater, and certainly in our area they do. They need warm water uh, for, uh, for the winter and things so the pipes won't freeze. You, need, you, know, you don't want to freeze in the shower either. The water heater went out. There was a, a pond of water on our kitchen floor, and we didn't have money. We didn't have money to pay for the repair or the replacement of the water heater. I didn't have the knowledge. Uh, the pipes were of uh, the water heater were built into it. We couldn't just turn off, you know, one part of it and, and get by on cold water. And I, like I said, I didn't know how to do it. So what are we going to do? What happens? Pardon me. Well, we pray. 
and we stumbled. We stumbled in our reasoning for a couple days. What did we do? There would have been a couple options left to us, but these options meant broadcasting our need, telling other people about it, either businesses or, or family, and then we would have to borrow money one way or another. In the end, it was about $750. And like I said, the Lord kicked me out of work. I think I had figured that if we were trying to scrimp by and get enough for it, it would be at least two months, if not two and a half to three months before we could afford this. And this was not a good thing. However, I realized, we came to realize a very difficult conclusion. And that is, God wanted us to trust him to take care of this. Even when we, didn't, when we didn't have the money, he didn't want us to tell anyone. He wanted us to go into our closet and seek him and believe that he is there and he will take care of that prayer. And wow, did he take care of that prayer. For a couple days, I was in deep prayer with some fasting. And uh, these were good times. The Lord, uh, the Lord allowed us a way to cope with the water. We could get what we needed, but things were difficult. We had towels at the water heater to soak up additional water coming out. We had a fan blowing constantly to try to blow, to try to dry the walls of the water heater uh, cabinet that we have and stuff. And but it was after several days of this, maybe two more days after the fasting and prayer. We started noticing some strange things. Now I had, I had during my prayers come to this place. I don't know why I did. I just said, started praying. I said, Lord, please heal the infirmity in our home. Please heal the infirmity in our home. Now I think the Lord is going to send someone to give us money or send someone that has a knowledge of how to work with these things, something. I want you to hear this very, very well for your own benefit, for your own, in your trials. No one ever came. Give us help, O oh God. Vain is the help of man. No one ever came. I'm not even blaming everybody else. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is God is able to take care of our needs without the help of anyone. He is never hindered by his creation. He will use people, yes, but he doesn't absolutely need to. So if you don't have anyone you can rely on, don't be discouraged. God is still in control and he is not limited by his creation. And so after a couple days, we start noticing some strange things. The walls of our water heater cabinet aren't getting wet. They're staying dry. The towels are staying dry. We're not seeing water coming out like we used to. And my wife says, after a few days, I think God healed our water here. I was a little more skeptical. I waited a few more days, still praying, using the water heaters the Lord had allowed. And after a few more days, we were back to normal, back to normal with our showers, our dishes, our, our washer and dryer, all of those things. We were back to normal. And the Lord showed me this in his own way. There was no audible voice. But he said, yes, I have healed your water heater. And it's like, like it is with Elijah and the widow who had the barrel of meal and the cruise of oil. He said, I will sustain your water heater until you can afford to replace, to replace it. And so our water heater lasted for 22 more months. And then when it began to leak, it leaked in a very small way. It was not at all unmanageable. It was very easy because then it needed, I think it was about another week until we could get the person to come out and we had the, the full money for it. So I want you to see, brethren, we don't need to take debt. God will help us. I really encourage everyone to get rid of their debt and to stay out of debt. If you want to serve the Lord, debt is only going to hinder you. And it's a poor testimony for a God who said he would supply all of your need. 
Trusting him can be a painful, challenging exercise, but it is worth it. I encourage all of you to travel down that road. May God bless.